Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 30 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. We are very excited to have you here. Please kindly go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather once again before your Holy Word, we come with hearts filled with gratitude for the privilege of studying and meditating on your divine truth. Your Word is a source of light and life, and we approach it today with reverence and expectation. Lord, we ask for your presence to be with us as we open the pages of the Bible. May your Holy Spirit guide our understanding, illuminate the passages, and reveal the depths of your wisdom and love. We acknowledge that your word is living and active, capable of transforming our lives and renewing our spirits. As we embark on this 30th day of our journey through the scriptures, we seek not only to gain knowledge, but to apply your teachings in our daily lives. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, showing us the way to walk in your truth and grace. Lord, we offer our hearts and minds to you, asking that you remove any distractions or preconceptions that may hinder our reception of your word. Open our hearts to receive your message with humility and faith. We pray for understanding, insight, and a deeper connection with you as we read and meditate on your word today. May the lessons we learn draw us closer to you and equip us to be your faithful disciples in the name of jesus christ our savior and lord we pray amen day 30 january 30th 2024 365 days bible reading old testament job 15 job 16 job 17 job 18 new testament matthew 20 Verse 20 to 34, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 17, 13 to 15. Old Testament NIV version, Job 15, 1 to 35. Eliphaz, then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, Would a wise person answer with empty notions or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words? with speeches that have no value, but you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen in on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we do not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray-haired and the aged are on our side, men even older than your father. Our God's are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you. Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? What are mortals that they could be pure or those born of women that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, if even the heavens are not pure, in his eyes, how much less mortals who are vile and corrupt will drink up evil like water. Listen to me and I will explain to you. Let me tell you what I have seen, what the wise have declared. Hiding nothing received from their ancestors, to whom alone the land was given when no foreigners moved among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment, the ruthless man through all the years stored up for him. 
terrifying sounds fill his ears. When all seems well, marauders attack him. He despairs of escaping the realm of darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about for food like a vulture. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. Troubles overwhelm him like a king poised to attack. Because he shakes his fist at God and vaunts himself against the Almighty, defiantly charging against him with a thick, strong shield, Though his face is covered with fat and his waist bulges with flesh, he will inhabit ruined towns and houses where no one lives. Houses crumble to rubble. He will no longer be rich and his wealth will not endure, nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness. A flame will, a flame will wither his shots and the breath of God's mouth will carry him away. Let him not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless, for he will get nothing in return. Before his time he will wither, and his branches will not flourish. He will be like a vine stripped of its unripe grapes, like an olive tree sh shedding its blossoms. For the company of the godless will be barren, and fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil their womb fashions deceit job 16 1 to 22 job then job replied i have heard many things like these you are miserable comforters all of you will your long-winded speeches never end what ails you that you keep on arguing i also could speak like you if you were in my place i could Make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you, but my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up, and it has become a witness. My gauntness rises up and testifies against me god assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me my opponent fastens on me his piercing eyes people open their mouth to jeer at me they strike my cheek in scorn and unite together against me god has turned me over to the ungodly and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked all was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. His archers surround me. Without pity, he pierces my kidneys and spills my gall on the ground. Again and again, he burst open me. He rushes at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin and buried my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows ring my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence and my prayer is pure. Earth, do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now, my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. Only a few years will pass before I take the path of no return. Job 17, 1 to 16. My spirit is broken. My days are cut short. The grave awaits me. Surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. Give me, O God, the pledge you demand. Who else will put up security for me? You have closed their minds to understanding. Therefore, you will not let them triumph. If anyone denounces their friends for reward, the eyes of their children will fail. God has made me a byword to everyone, a man in whose face people spit. My eyes have grown dim with grief. My whole frame is but a shadow. The upright are appalled at this. The innocent are aroused against the ungodly. Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to their ways and those with clean hands will grow stronger. 
But come on, all of you, try again. I will not find a wise man among you. My days have passed. My plans are shattered. Yet the desires of my heart turn night into day. In the face of the darkness, light is near. If the only home I hope for is the grave, if I spread out my bed in the realm of darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, my mother or my sister, where then is my hope? Who can see any hope for me? Will it go down to the gates of death? Will we descend together into the dust? Job 18, 1 to 21. Bildad. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, When will you end these speeches? Be sensible and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight? You would tear yourself to pieces in your anger. Is the earth to be abandoned for your sake? Or must the rocks be moved from their place? The lamp of a wicked man is snuffed out. The flame of his fire stops burning. The light in his tent becomes dark. The lamp beside him goes out. The vigor of his step is weakened. His own schemes throw him down. His feet thrust him into a net. He wanders into its mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel. A snare holds him fast. A noose is hidden for him on the ground. A trap lies in his path. Terrors startle him on every side and dog his every step. Calamity is hungry for him. Disaster is ready for him when he falls. It eats away parts of his skin. Death's firstborn devours his limbs. He is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the king of terrors. Fire resides in his tent. Burning sulfur is scattered over his dwelling. His roots dry up below and his branches wither above the memory of him perishes from the earth he has no name in the land he is driven from light into the realm of darkness and is banished from the world he has no offspring or descendants among his people no survival where once he lived people of the west are appalled at his fate those of the east are seized with horror surely such is the dwelling of an evil man such is the place of one who does not know god new testament niv version matthew 20 20 to 34 a mother's request then the mother of zebedee's sons came to jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked the favor of him what is it you want he asked she said Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Two blind men receive sight. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. Lord, they said, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, 
They received their sight and followed him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 17, verse 13 to 15. Rise up, Lord, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it. And may there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I will be satisfied with seeing your likeness. Amen. Lessons learned from Job 15 and Job 16. Eliphaz's response in Job 15, Eliphaz continues to challenge Job, accusing him of sin and suggesting that his suffering is a result of his wrongdoing. It reminds us to be cautious in making judgments about others' hardships, as we may not fully understand their circumstances or God's purposes. Job's Lament in Job 16, Job expresses his deep grief and anguish, feeling abandoned by both God and his friends. It teaches us that in times of suffering, it is essential to express our emotions and lament honestly before God. Lessons learned from Job 17 and Job 18. Job's despair. In Job 17, Job continues to express his despair and the hopelessness he feels in his situation. It reminds us that even in our darkest moments, we can turn to God for strength and hope. Bildad's response in Job 18. Bildad rebukes Job, emphasizing the fate of the wicked. It teaches us the importance of offering words of comfort and encouragement to those who are suffering rather than further condemning them. Lessons learned from Matthew 20 verse 20 to 34. Jesus is compassion. In this passage, Jesus demonstrates compassion by healing the blind men and responding to the request of James and John's mother. It teaches us the importance of compassion and service to others as followers of Christ. Lessons learned from Psalm 17, verse 13 to 15. Hope in God's righteousness. These verses express the psalmist's confidence in God's deliverance and the hope of seeing God's face. It reminds us to place our trust in God's righteousness and to seek his presence even in times of trouble. In summary, these verses offer lessons in avoiding judgment of others in their suffering, expressing our emotions before God, turning to God in despair, offering words of comfort, demonstrating compassion and service to others, and placing our hope in God's righteousness and presence. They provide valuable insights into empathy, faith, and reliance on God during challenging times. Faith declarations from Job 15, Job 16, Job 17, and Job 18. I declare that even in the midst of doubts and accusations, I will hold fast to my faith in God's righteousness and justice. I confess that when I face suffering and despair, I will turn to God and express my emotions, knowing that he hears my prayers. I declare that I will not rush to judgment when others are in distress, but I will offer words of comfort and support. I confess that I will seek wisdom and discernment when offering counsel to those who are suffering. Faith declarations from Matthew 20, verse 20 to 34. I declare that I will follow Jesus' example of compassion and service, extending a helping hand to those in need. I confess that I will not seek positions of prominence, but I will humbly serve others and seek to meet their needs. Faith declarations from Psalm 17, verse 13 to 15. I declare that I place my hope in God's righteousness and I trust in his deliverance, knowing that he hears my prayers. I confess that I will seek the presence of God and long to see his face 
finding my refuge and joy in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Please, if you've been blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvation in Christ. 101 at gmail.com that is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com god bless you please remember to subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo Areleba. thank you so much for being here again today it's always a pleasure having you here i look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.